give us a sense of how the pandemic has changed, uh, you know, the users. I mean, how many, uh, how, what kind of a surge have you seen in terms of user numbers? Yeah, I think the, thanks for having me, Hassan. In terms of the business, I think there's a, one thing that is top of mind for us, actually, some categories are really doing well. You know, obviously things like delivery and, and food, some categories are maybe not doing as well, like transport. So I think in general, I think we've seen um, a pretty stable business because as a business, we're pretty resilient. Um, actually, honestly, my, my, our main focus over the past few weeks has actually been more on the, the drivers and merchants who, who don't have the same level of resilience and has been with us through good times. So we've been really focused on a lot of programs to help them during this time. What kind of opportunities do you see amid such trying, challenging times in Indonesia? Uh, I think the the biggest opportunity that we see, I think one, one thing, for example, that we saw is that people are obviously thinking a lot more about um, hygiene. And so cash as a way is, is to pay is actually not as hygienic. So when you do food delivery, for example, a lot of uh, drivers have asked us, hey, can you help us, uh, you know, not take cash? And so we've been doing a lot of programs, for example, working with banks to actually enable uh, free top-ups to people so that they can do a lot more of the contactless payments. And we've seen that it's starting to work, right? Uh, we also see opportunities in actually being much more efficient about helping our drivers and merchants. Um, you know, we, we started something called the Gojek Partner Fund, uh, where management donated 25% of their salaries to actually help drivers. So uh, let me give you an example of a program that actually has been really cool, is we have a, a need for drivers to eat lunch during the day, and they need to, and we have merchants need to sell their wares, but there's no place to sell it. So what we do is we give affordable meals for driver vouch in the form of vouchers, and then the drivers then go to the merchants, and then this creates this whole wheel of the economy turning during this time when it's very difficult for many businesses to stay afloat. Aldi, Rish in Hong Kong with us. How is your business evolved? Can you give us a, you know, further anecdotal stories of uh, the way things are evolving under lockdowns, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, and if you see some of those changes perhaps remaining after this whole coronavirus uh, epidemic has indeed gone away? Yeah. So I think one trend that is going to change is we're going to see a lot more of small merchants uh, in categories, for example, like groceries that maybe previously have not embraced uh, digital payments or e-commerce, start doing it. Um, because, for example, right, you, there's a small market that we have in GoPay, and we are, what we're doing is how do, we, how do we help them sell during this pandemic when people can't actually go to the market? So they are using a combination of GoPay, GoSend, Go and GoMart in our ecosystem to start selling the groceries that they have online. And these are things that probably would have taken a long time to evolve um, because you know, markets are generally a place where people congregate. Uh, so online adoption of payments and commerce is not as fast. But this pandemic has actually really changed that. And we are fortunate to be in a position to be able to capture that because we have a holistic ecosystem in Gojek through GoPay and GoSend and GoFood. So, Aldi, I mean, that's very good. What is, I mean, apart from, of course, the, uh, the dreadful pathogen itself, what is the biggest negative you're seeing in your business now? I think the, the biggest concern that we have is how do we maintain the income and livelihood of our driver partners and merchants? I think that it's very difficult. Um, and as a business, obviously, that uh, has transportation um, uh, as part of the business to actually continue to grow. But we are fortunate to have things like food delivery and, uh, and logistics. So. How do we keep our drivers resilient during this time through programs that we create? Uh, you know, simple things, right? So we, we need to help our drivers feed their families. So we have programs to deliver uh, rice, staples, and sugar through our GoPay wallet. And, and, and I think that for our merchants, how do we help them continue to grow business by helping them promote their businesses online to consumers who are at home? Uh, I, th I think really the challenge for us and what keeps, keeps me up at night is actually how do we make sure that our partners can stay alive through this time? Digital payment, Aldi, is an increasingly crowded space. In Southeast Asia, we have not just GoPay, but also Alipay, Razorpay, GrabPay. How are, you, how are you positioning for the competition? I think um, one thing that we've really been fortunate is actually we're, we're part of this ecosystem. 
right, um, in Gojek, which is not just about payments. We, we serve a business holistically. So if you think about a small merchant, you know, they have uh, the need to actually have an offline EDC. They have the need to be able to sell online. They have the need to be able to do delivery uh, and pay for that delivery. So for the offline business, for example, we have Spot, which is a company that provides that service. For online, we have Midtrans. And for delivery, we have GoFood, GoJack, GoSen. And so building that holistic ecosystem that truly grows the merchant business is really what uh, our position is about. And another position that we have is actually, how do we actually help improve the livelihood of the drivers and the people who are, uh, who are in need of financial services? So from very early on, we've had programs where we have drivers actually sign up for like mortgages uh, for kids' educational savings. So this DNA of the company, which started as a way to help drivers, and helping merchants holistically, I think is going to be our advantage, and it's going to bring us through these difficult times because it's not only how we started, but it continues to be the core of our culture and our responsibility. Um, Aldi, tell me something, this final question. With what's happening, we've had a lot of valuations of companies being beaten down. Is this the right time to be perhaps engaging in some M&A activity? And the other thing is, do you actually need to do that anyway in order to stay competitive? So, I don't want to speculate on any activity, but uh, the way that we see it is that regardless of whether good times or bad times, you have to build a really solid foundational business, right? And we're very lucky to have just secured funding as a group, and we are in a position to execute it. And as long as we can make sure that we can keep our drivers and our partners uh, afloat during these times and help them, then I think we will have um, the support, not only from obviously the investors, but most importantly, the customers and the drivers and the partners, they will remember how we treated them during this time. And when recovery comes back, I believe that we're going to be in the best position to take